And welcome back to the hot lap. Big moves are plenty still. No, the silly season is very much not over. As you can see, Adrian Newey potentially still could go to Ferrari. Grain of salt, maybe a bit more than a grain of salt. Not quite the tablespoon. A uh, teaspoon of salt, let's go with this time. So, Adrian Newey, though, who was recently spotted at Bologna Airport amid rumours that the Red Bull designer guru has received an offer to join Ferrari. That's what PlanetF1.com is reporting and many others. Now, the current uncertainty surrounding the Red Bull has led to suggestions that Mr. Newey, as we know, one of the best designers in Formula 1, could move away from what has been his home for quite a while. Almost two... Yeah, I'm trying to think almost two decades, but not quite. So reports last month claimed Newey had received a lucrative offer, not from Ferrari, but Lawrence Stroll, a la Aston Martin, to almost, this was at the Saudi Arabia Grand Prix, and this rumour was almost a blank check rumour, as in, whatever you want, we'll pay you. Now, Mike Crack, the Aston Martin team principal, however, he has denied this at the recent Japanese Grand Prix, that they have approached new, and that they are quite happy with the current setup. But with the situation at Red Bull, um, coming around, going around, streaming in the background... Despite, obviously, three victories, and let's be fair, being very much the favourites for F1 2024 at both championships, their rivals have uh, tasted blood, so to speak, since the first sign of tension behind the scenes at the Red Bull, you know, the Red Bull F1 race, F1 racing team. And that is at least according to German publication Automotor und Sport, who points towards the fact that Adrian Newey has also received an offer from Ferrari and... Was, really, was recently spotted at Bologna Airport with the rumours of a switch to the Scuddy area clearly very serious this time. And obviously, he could be going on holiday, I guess. But in between in between Grand Prix, when you, you know, really? So Nui, who turned 65, yet retirement age for some, but he's not last December, is said to hate nothing more than internal politics. It was one of the reasons he left Williams and it was one of the reasons he ended up leaving McLaren. But he's been very happy at Red Bull, obviously, until these, hello, internal politics. So there's this supposed power struggle going on when it can't be it can't be too comfortable for people working there within the Red Bull. I don't think we've heard the last of it, but thank goodness it's died down. But the report describes a state of two worlds at Red Bull with the team's on track success masking what is believed to be a tug of war behind closed doors. Now, while Horner sees himself, according to Automotor and Sport, as the new general and the support of Red Bull's Thai majority owners is keen to marginalise if they have stuck with Horner almost through thick and thin at this point, the Austrian elements of the company yeah, um, all, obviously at loggerheads, and that's where the Verstappens are. And Verstappen, who has been heavily linked, though, with a move to Mercedes in recent weeks, has repeatedly made it clear that his own future is inextricably linked with that of a certain helmet Marco. We said here, though, I don't think he's going to move. I think he'll stay. I think he'll stay at Red Bull. But we'll see. So while Ferrari and Aston Martin have rumoured to have made their interest clear, the report claims Mercedes are yet to join the race to sign Adrian Newey through concern that the arrival of a designer of his stature could cause too much internal unrest. I mean, they've got James Allison. They have, well, I'd like to think between 2014 and 2021, they had a good design team. What happened? I don't know. But as did Martin's status as a UK-based team could potentially give Stroll an edge in the pursuit of Newey's signature. Yet the 65-year-old could regard the Ferrari switch as a crowning achievement. It's almost the difference between comfortable to compromise if he goes to Aston Martin and makes it a winning team that would be absolutely fantastic if he goes to Ferrari and makes them a winning team along with Lewis Hamilton and Charles Leclerc legendary I think they'll be speaking of him um so it's I think it'll be a tough sell though for Newey at 65 years old to completely move country I'd imagine his children were obviously a lot older and I think he said himself that's one of the reasons why he wasn't attracted to going to Ferrari anytime soon. I'm pretty sure he said that in, in some of the interviews. But any team would have to wait until the expiry of his contract with Red Bull. And that's at the end of 2025 to Lan Newey, who is currently leading the development of the Red Bull's RB17's hypercar. And that's due to arrive September 
2025. Now, Newey has been frequently linked with that move over Ferrari over the last few years, most heavily, apparently, in 2014. And that was shortly after Red Bull's dominance ended um, with Sebastian Vettel last winning with the uh, V8s in 2013. And if we know, 2014 came and it was very much an engine formula. Writing in his 2017 biography, Newey pointed to the culture with the Red Bull team who were crown champions in 2010, just five years after arriving on the grid. In an explanation of his decision to stay put, he said, we'd gone from being the paddock joke, the upstart, the party hard fizzy drinks company, to the four times world champion. And we done it the old fashioned way using principles that to me were in line with keeping with the true spirit of racing um so it's going to be interesting i mean stay tuned is he going to throw i think it's still kind of like a pipe dream but as we learned from the beginning of this year with lewis hamilton going to ferrari um yeah anything is pretty much possible really isn't it so next up we've got um so after new to Ferrari, we've got Carlos Sainz to Mercedes. We're still talking about it. We've talked about it before. News reports are still coming out. And he's allegedly still in talks with this potential Mercedes deal. Where will Carlos Sainz end up? I think, the as we keep on saying, despite all these reports, keep saying Sainz and Mercedes, Sainz and Mercedes, the biggest sticking point appears to be Kimi Antonelli. And that's Kimi Antonelli in the guise of... Mercedes want to sign him. As we know, it's been written everywhere. We've spoken about it that Toto Wolf missed out on that Verstappen signing simply because he had nowhere to put Max Verstappen. When you've got Lewis Hamilton and Nico Rosberg, would you really want to risk put it, you know, getting rid of one of them and putting them in the Mercedes, even though it was Verstappen? You probably wouldn't because Verstappen, as solid as he was, it was fairly great. He made quite a few mistakes, but his talent straight away was very, very clear. So... Mercedes have reportedly, and this is reportedly, offered Carlos Sainz a contract, a one plus one year deal. Yes, that rings a bell. That's exactly what they offered Lewis Hamilton. A one year deal with you with maybe we can keep you on for another year if we want. And I imagine that's because of the Kimi Antonelli clause. However, as we said the other day, Kimi Antonelli, as good a driver as he is, he hasn't set the world alight, let's say, in F2, partly I think because Prima are really struggling setting that car up because um, even Oli Berman hasn't exactly set the world alight completely in Formula 2 as much as he set the world alight in that Ferrari in Saudi Arabia. But Sainz has, has spoken about his future and he said it, it could be dependent on others as he looks to keep um, himself pushing for the next drive. So he's fielded more questions over his future plans and he has still states that he has no clue where he will be racing next year as things stand while vowing to keep pushing to impress. Now, you can make an argument with Verstappen at Red Bull. We think he's going to stay. He is now one of the, the hottest unemployed driver you know out of contract driver for 2025 and as we know he entered this season pretty much unemployed and has absolutely done gangbusters um a podium finish on australia a podium finish in japan sits fourth in the driver's standings and that's despite that missed saudi arabia now several teams and that is including the likes of mercedes we've discussed and red bull are yet to confirm their full 2025 lineups science speaking before this was before fernando Alonso's renewal said he was talking to many teams, and I still think he is. I mean, he's also been linked to Sauber, the stake F1 team, with a view of going Audi. But that's going to be a long pros a long project. And Sainz is in the prime, I think, of his of his life in terms of the driving. So would he want to risk wasting his prime? Um, now, asking an interview with Sky Sports, he said, honestly, unfortunately, I have no clue where I'm going to be next year. It is true. We're talking to many teams. I just need to keep focused on what I'm doing just to prove myself, prove to everyone that when I'm given a fast car, I'm maximising what I'm given and I deliver. Yeah, so fairly wise there from Carlos Sainz. Interestingly, though, what I would like to get into is a... Um, it's an article by Sky about uh, F1 driver market. Carlos Sainz, Sergio Perez, Kimi Antonelli, futures to be decided, um, which I thought was interesting because they, they're going on about you know who's who's who is who is going where um so they've got the field will red bull seat be available in 2025 as they note that verstappen's contract does go on until 2028 and there is this investigation over 
um, Christian Horner. Will it be started again? There's all this speculation about how in Marco. And then they said lately, Toto has been really nice, saying a lot of nice things about me, Verstappen noted in Japan, after Wolf had described him as spectacular. But they said the problem for Mercedes is that they're showing no signs of being capable of competing with the current rule set. Yeah, they are very much the fourth or even fifth fastest team. We'll see how fast they are in Australia. Not Australia, sorry, China, which I think is going to be quite interesting. And it says, for now, it seems unlikely Verstappen will be going anywhere soon. On the other side, though, Sergio Perez, they believe, is in his final year of his contract. Will he be re-signed? I think if he keeps doing what he's doing, absolutely he can be re-signed. But it's, they're talking about Sainz being the standout free agent, linking him with all the teams we've already, we've already suggested, but he's not the only one. With this Alonso extension, it says, does it clear the way for Antonelli at Mercedes? And that was the early season narrative, they're saying. Now, speaking in Japan before news of Alonso's extension broke, Wolf admitted that the fact Mercedes are in a rebuild phase, rebuild phase, would impact his decision. He said it could be putting a young driver in there and giving him an opportunity with less pressure than fighting for victories immediately or putting a more experienced driver in the car that can help us dig ourselves out of our current performance picture, which I thought, which I thought was quite an interesting thing. Kimi Antonelli, only 17. I think he's 18 in August and he is due to drive the 2021 Mercedes W12 and W13 later on this season. And it says here he began his maiden F2 season with a huge expectations, but so far he's failed to score a podium or make a massive impression during the opening three rounds, as we said. Also, pressure mounting on Daniel Ricciardo. Um, Sonoda has absolutely not destroyed him, but been solidly better than him, let's say, um, which has given, I think, Ricciardo fans reason to be slightly up upset, I guess. But having impressed... Um, when Ricardo missed those five races, Liam Lawson is waiting in the wings. Could we see a Liam Lawson, Danny Ricardo swap? I don't think so at this point. But if it carries on, possibly in the summer break. But I don't, I don't think so. I'm, I'm not too sure. And then you've obviously got Valtteri Bottas and Zhao Guanyu. Yes, going into his home race. What are they going to do there? I think at least one of them are probably going to go at the moment. Um, as Audi have now kind of like officially bought the team, and there's lots of rumours that have linked Hulkenberg and and Science to that to that team, which I think could be quite, which I think could be quite interesting. And it says the Alpine drivers Gasly and Esteban Ocon, they're also out of contract and will likely be looking for a way out, given the performance of that car and in stability off track after countless management changes yeah they're probably going to want to leave which is currently the worst car on the grid i can't believe i'm saying that alpine the worst car on the grid it's not good at all so stay tuned though as we as we uh, go into the Chinese Grand Prix weekend, a sprint weekend, starting obviously on Friday with that sprint qualifying. Saturday, we've got the sprint race. And then the normal qualifying and Sunday, we've got the race. Also, we've got the IndyCar and also we've got the Croatia, the Croatia Rally. Massive thanks. Uh, excuse me, I'm trying not to hiccup live on air. But there we go. If you want to subscribe, that would be absolutely fantastic. We will speak to you soon. Stay tuned right here at the Hot Lap.